it's me. I'm back. Um, I'm not sure if everybody caught the message because I just posted it a little bit ago. We actually had company come this afternoon a little bit unexpectedly and they stayed for supper so it was nice and um, we raided the garden and got some fresh stuff out of there. So um, I wasn't sure what time I could get back to do the live today but I want to do a little bit more on this um, buffet slash TV unit, whatever we're going to use it for, that we started last night painting. Um, today I noticed when I was looking at it dry that there's a couple of like little hairline crack bits um, along the handles where just the, the old finish had sort of pulled away from the, the handle area. So I filled those in with, um, I don't have it here, but I filled it in with um, just ordinary white caulking that you could paint over. I let that dry and then I finished painting and I did all the touch-ups on the paint today and it looks really nice. And then I'll show you in a minute. I opened up the cabinet, I vacuumed it out, I vacuumed it all out. Sorry, it's really hot in here, like blazing hot in here. Um, and then I put uh, just a nice layer of varnish and all that does, not varnish but um, shellac, all that does is it just brings up the color of the wood again that's on the inside because I'm not painting the inside of this and I generally don't if the insides in really nice shape I just clean it up so um, as long as it doesn't clash too much with the color we painted so yesterday when we were doing this I kept saying that I was painting this in lichen but it's not lichen that I was using it's linen so linen is the color that this buffet slash TV unit is in um, and it's a little bit darker than lichen. So lichen is a similar mossy green but much much lighter. In fact you could make it I guess by adding some uh, raw silver white fusion paint to this to tone it down it'd be kind of like lichen. So just to correct myself it was linen that we painted this in. I sometimes get confused with my paints. I don't know they're all the same after a while. So I'm going to show you what I've done. Um, I did spray paint my handles today. Remember these handles were gold and I apologize um, in advance for being so sweaty. But So I took the, I took the handles and I spray painted them. Um, and I spray painted them black because we were talking about what would go nicely with this color. Um, and I thought that the gold, these were actually kind of a copper looking handle before and I didn't like that with this color. I thought it was too faded out. So we're going to go with the black and make it look more modern. Um, so I've got those painted. I do have to just, you can see little tiny bubbles there maybe from the spray paint and I'm going to just sand those off a little tiny bit and then spray these once more. But I'll put them on just for kicks tonight and show you how really neat it looks with it now. So I'm going to pull you in here and you won't see me if you come on. I, I might see you or I might not, but leave a comment if you are interested in knowing anything more about this piece. This is the piece itself. Um, so it turned out really quite nice. I'm going to try and move this here. It turned out pretty nice. It's uh, It was a really ugly old 1970s looking stain on this whole thing. Really ugly. Um, so we've painted it in linen and we've left the inside and I'll show you that really quickly with my screwdriver to get the doors open. So what I did was I just cleaned up the inside and it looks really nice. So I cleaned up the doors, made sure there was no paint on the doors on the inside and then on the inside of this it's kind of hard to tell with the light but um, I just vacuumed it out and then I put a little layer of um, of shellac in there and the shellac just brings out the wood color a bit so I tidied up everything so there's no paint overhangs nothing like that I still have to vacuum out these couple of drawers um, and that's about it and everything's done there so far so what I want to do I want to stain this top, I put the handles on, and if there's a little bit of time I might do some waxing, but I'm not sure that I want to do the wax tonight. I'm still debating whether I'll actually do that. So what I'm going to use is um, 
This is one of my favorite stains. It's Verithane gel stain and it's in the color Kona, which is a really dark color. Um, I'm not going to leave it that dark. If I left it this dark, I think it would be too much. But if you leave this on longer it, or put on two or three coats, it does go almost a black brown. It's a beautiful color. So what I'm going to do with this um, is I leave it on for just a few minutes and then I take it all off and it's about the right color that I, that I like. I also took a chisel and I just banged up the um, top here a little bit because over here it had been banged up from I guess maybe them moving at one point in time. So I wanted it to match so I just banged it up and then I took some chocolate paint and I let the paint sit in there and then I washed the rest off. It's got these little tiny grooves that look a little bit more distressed. So I'm gonna leave it like that because I kind of like the I kind of like the way that it looks distressed there. Um, the paint that I used for the handles was Rustoleum's um, it's paint and primer. So when you're doing metal, uh, you want to have a paint and primer usually. Um, because then it sticks to the metal without having to do any other prep to it. All I did with these handles to get them like that is I just washed them with soapy water and scrubbed them with a little brush, like a toothbrush. So I'm going to take those and what I'm going to do is I've, I've already got um, a coat of shellac on here. And the reason I put shellac on sanded wood is it acts as a a, a wood conditioner. So when you buy wood conditioner in the store, it's um, basically just a really watered down shellac. So if you, I make my own shellac, I use the, the um, shellac shells and I mix up my own, but if you um, put a layer of it on, it, it gets into the wood grain and then when you put your stain on your stain turns out really nicely um, because it's not blotching stain can really blotch it can be really dark in one spot and really light in another spot and it looks terrible this is kind of a cool wood this is how it sanded out it's got all these weird marks in it i don't know what they're from but you couldn't even see these marks before i sanded it um, so the heavy heavy stain that they spray on these when they do furniture had covered all of this up but I kind of like it so I'm going to work with it the way it is and apply the stain so that it looks even better so I'm just taking off my um, layer of paper tape that I put on here so that I didn't get paint on the wood let's get that off first and get rid of it Okay, so that's going in the garbage. So I think I'll uh, move this up and I'm going to put it in a little bit of a different spot here. So bear with me for a second. We'll get you above the scene here today. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, all right, perfect. So again, it's going to be very fine stain. Um, have a brush this is just a cheap chip brush which I'm going to use to put the stain on with um, basically I throw these away after they're like a dollar dollar fifty something like that they're not expensive at all um, got the cloth this is just shop towel that I'll fold up and use to wipe it all off with so what I'm going to do first is I just have to grab a stir stick here really quickly. I forgot to get one. All right, I'm gonna put my gloves on because when you get stain on your hands and under your fingernails, it's so hard to get off. It's just awful. Excuse my messy garage, but that's the way it is out here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stir my stain up because I haven't done that yet. Let's move this down a little bit. I'm trying to get a good camera angle for you guys. How about that? Uh, so this stain generally separates. It separates. I'll show you. So the oil is on the top 
and the gel is beneath that. So what I have to do first is stir it up and it only takes a minute. Well, I use this fairly often, so for me it only takes a minute, but if you get a brand new can of this, you might have to stir it for a little bit of time, like maybe three to five minutes to get it really mixed in well. The reason I like it is because it's not runny and watery like a liquid stain. So it's like this, it's like pudding, really it's, it's literally like pudding, it's really thick. But that's what you want because it's easy to put on, it's manageable, it doesn't spill everywhere, and it's just heavenly stuff to work with. So what I have to do first, and this will only take a minute, is I have to take my sanding block and I've got 150 sandpaper, which is a little bit rough, but it's okay. I'm just going to do a really light um, sanding just to break the surface of the shellac. So the reason I want to do that, I could stain right over top of it, but I want to just break the surface um, so that my stain tape can hit you everywhere. So you want to use the same sandpaper and you want to go with the grain of the wood. And just let it break the surface of that first coat of shellac I have on there. And that shellac is my wood conditioner. So if I had somebody here, we'd be watching over here, but I don't, so bear with me. This thing is the same thing on the way out, pretty, pretty fast. I don't, at this point I don't need to sand it smooth anymore because it's already smooth from my big sander. So I'm going to do the edge, both edges. Pretty fast, really. And I'm going to go right in front of the camera. And that is that. Okay, so then I'm going to take my big brush. I really think the Kona stain is going to look just beautiful when this is done. Normally I would be vacuuming this, but I don't want to turn the vacuum on if anybody's listening because it hurts your ears a little bit. So it's taking a bit of the stuff off. It's not. I don't want it to take all the shellac off. I just want it to take the, the very, very, very outer surface, like cracking a shell, basically. That's how I think of it. Okay. And I'm going to take, I normally have a, um, I normally have a piece of tack cloth to wipe the surface with after I sand, but I don't know where my tap cloth is, so I'm just doing it like this for tonight. And you can see the amount of junk. I don't know if you can see that, that's coming off there. It's kind of showing up as white. And I'm trying to get the dust right off. And out of the groove, that's ready to stain. So that's all the real prep. Um, so I've sanded it with a sander. Well, first I stripped it with paint stripper. Sanded it with a sander after the paint stripper was all off and dry. And then I shellacked it as my wood conditioner. And like I said, the, sh the wood conditioner just, or the shellac just soaks into the wood grain after you've, used, after you've sanded it, it sort of um, raises the wood grain. So when you shellac it, it um, fills in the wood grain a little bit, but then when you go to stain over the shellac, which you can always stain over shellac, it um, makes your stain apply evenly. So I'm just brushing this on. You can do this in like very small sections of say two feet by two feet or one foot by one foot, whatever you want to do. But I want to kind of get a good amount on here. And I'm going to roughly say three minutes. And you just paint this stuff on 
So it's on just like Jello. It's so smooth. And I'm trying to get in this little groove here. I'm trying to just work the stain into this little tiny groove on the edge that there is. And go up here. You have to be a bit careful, but not too careful. It's not like when you're using um, the other kind of stain that is really runny. It's just really hard to work with. Um, this is pretty easy. And you notice I'm not doing the very, very edge here yet. I'll show you why. Um, I generally don't do it. And especially because I've painted already, I tend to usually stay in the top and get that all done and out of the road and then do my painting. But I haven't done that with this one. I've done the painting first. So I'm going to be a little bit more... Whoa. My camera is stuck. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with it. Okay. So, I'm kind of mentally paying attention to the time. Usually what I do is I have my Google Home right here. And I just tell Google to set the timer for three minutes. Um, and then it tells me when my three minutes is up. If you wanted to do this really dark, like almost this dark chocolate brown that it's showing, you would want it for at least six minutes, five, six minutes. And then if you want it to be almost a pure chocolate brown, like almost like a paint, um, you would do one coat, take it off after five minutes, and then apply another coat the next day or when this is really dry. And that would be your uh, second coat, and it would just be almost like a pure. So what I'm doing is taking my cloth, and I'm just going to fold this edge in, this edge in. I'm just making a pad, like so. This is going to get full of stain in like three seconds. So I'm going to try and put you back here again, where you might be able to see a little bit more. So it's set for a few minutes, and I don't want this really dark. I want it to be just a really nice color, but not super dark. And I'm going to get another piece of paper here, just in case, if I'm pretty sure I'll need it. And it really makes a difference when you choose your stain color as to what, um, what you, you know, I don't want this really dark, I want it to be a really pretty Kona color. You see that? That's a beautiful color. And that's the color I want, and that's about a three minute stain with this. So it's getting a little sticky, so I know that I have like about a minute or a minute and a half to work with it. And at this point, all I'm doing is working it right into the wood, right into the wood. And then I will take my rag, another rag, and I'll take it all off. So this is just, it sat on the wood, now I'm working it into the wood. And that's how I do gel stain. I know some people just uh, put it on and then they just wipe it right off, but I like to work it into the wood. Now this is where I take my cloth and I go around the edge. Very carefully. Around the edge, very carefully, because I don't want to get stain on my paint. So if I had brushed it over the edge, I would probably lose some stain onto my beautiful paint and I don't want to do that so I just take the excess and my cloth is completely saturated so I have to turn it inside out and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger pad and I'm going to go from one end to the other not just taking it off That's so pretty. Ooh, I love that. Really picking up the wood green nicely. And it's a little bit darker in some spots, and I really like that. But it's not blotchy. Blotchy is when it turns a really funny black color. 
the stain turns this ugly, ugly black color. So I'm still getting the most of my stain off and just keep reworking this cloth. Uh, probably have to get another one in a minute. But it's pretty easy stuff to work with and it does have a little bit of an open time and then it starts to get sticky. Okay, so that's the most of it off. And I don't want to leave it like that. So I will take a clean cloth and go over it. I lose my roller again. So this cloth is getting even more of the stain off. I think that color is pretty nice. It's kind of what I wanted, a dark, sort of a dark pine looking appearance to it. And if I wanted it darker, like I said, I would let this dry and it takes about 12 hours. It doesn't say that on their can, it says like four hours or something, but I find to dry properly, it takes about 12 hours. And I just usually stain at night and then I leave things to dry. Oh. So it's definitely picking up some darker areas, but it is not blotching, and the blotching is a really awful thing to have to deal with. Actually it is, it is kind of blotching over here, and I know why. So right here, if you can see that, and right there, it's blotching, and a little bit right here. And that's probably because I have got some paint stripper that's still stuck on there and I didn't get it all off. So what I'm gonna do is grab my mineral spirits. Um, I'm not sure that I can get this off without sanding it. So if I do, I'll just wait till it dries sand these areas tomorrow down better and then reapply my stain to them. So this here is taking off some of that. Oh, there, I got most of it right now. So this is paint thinner and what it does is it thins out the stain. So if you have any areas where it's picked up too much stain, it'll thin it right out for you. So it's always handy to have your paint thinner. And actually the edges of this are picking it up too dark, so I'm going to lighten it with paint thinner as well. That's better. I'm going to move you back here. So this is what I'm doing is just with the paint thinner, you can see how dark it is there, right? And it's picking up because this wood is so raw and the paint thinner is just thinning it out like that for me. So it's leaving it stained, but it's lightening it up really dramatically. Sorry about being in front of you. And that looks really awesome. Now, if you really, really, really didn't like the color, you could take a rag with paint thinner and just dump it on your rag and um, go over the whole piece. But there's just a few little places that I want to lighten it up here still where it got sticky on me. I think it's a pretty color. I'm kind of liking how the color turned out. I'll see what it's like when it's in the daylight tomorrow and if it's uh, not dark enough or I don't like the way it looks. Exactly, I'll do another coat. That's pretty good, actually. Okay. So, that is the stain. Now, what I wanted to show you was these uh, um, door handles, because I think they turned out pretty cool, actually. I really like them. <laughs> And let's see here. Let me go down again. Sorry. I don't like 
to get a good a good angle of this so we'll do right about there okay okay man these are the handles um like i said they turned out pretty neat i might have to do a little bit of fudging with them but it should be okay let's see here Screwdriver is where. Oh, actually, I'm gonna use a drill. So let's go in here a little bit. This is how they go. They go uh, back plate. Move my light in a little bit. I have such bad lighting in here today. Um, I do need to get into here though. So I'm gonna try and pull my door open. Too. Okay, this is the back plate that goes like that, and then this goes like this, right like that, and then it gets screwed on back here, hopefully. Always tricky putting door covered handles back on, I find. Sometimes they don't line up the way they're supposed to. I think it's going to be a pretty neat, pretty neat unit for sure. And I think I can advertise it as a, oh cool, I can advertise it as a um, TV hutch or a um, buffet. I think this would be like a really modern style buffet for someone's house. So let's try another one here. Put this one on. I like these uh, back plates though. I think they're really different than, than most you find anywhere. I'd say this set, again, is probably from the 70s. I'm guessing. 70s or 80s, and it kind of looks like to me. Okay, so I'll get a screw in there and do that one up. And with the inside, uh, with some shellac on the wood, it just freshened the wood up really nicely. The wood kind of fades over the years. It sort of looks dull and almost dirty, but the shellac really, really looks nice. So that's how the handles look. I think it's really cool. Um, if you can see that very well, it's a really neat look. I'm gonna back you up a little bit and we'll go over to uh, these ones here. My lighting is terrible, I'm sorry. There, that's better. So we'll go here. I wish I had my red screwdriver. I don't know where I put it. Somewhere here. And um, we'll put a back plate on. Um, so really there's there's not too much to do once the stain is done, if I get the stain proper. Um, and if I decide to do another coat after that, I will um, give it another really super light sanding with the 220 grit and then I will um, put I always put um, wipe on poly on the top of my stain because that allows you to put anything liquid on it poly is actually plastic whereas shellac is actually um, a natural product that works really well but if you get liquor on it like mineral like hard liquor um, it will melt your finish so if you shellac this as your final finish it would melt the final finish and that wouldn't be so great so you want to put something like a wipe on poly especially if this is going to be a buffet because it'll have um, you know like dinner things on it and sometimes hot foods and 
drinks and things like that probably over the years. I'm guessing that's what we use our buffet for. Not so much drinks, but food. And these little guys in the halls. that. It's kind of a neat little unit. It has the whole top piece, but I don't want to do the whole top piece. And I find a lot of people don't even want to buy them. So I'm just going to do the bottom piece. And another thing I have to do is take um, the, the bottom of this cabinet and put legs. We're going to take that bottom skirting off here. And we're going to put boarding under, proper boards underneath, and then put four or five inch legs under it and paint the legs black as well. So that is all I wanted to show you tonight. That's it with the handles. It's kind of a cool little piece, I think. And I love the color. Um, I'll probably do some black wax, just a little bit of antiquing wax, and I will finish up this stain tomorrow. And so... The final view of this will be probably not until I get it all done, but I'll take and show you. So it's going to look pretty neat. Um, and that's it with all the handles on. It's kind of a cool piece, isn't it? So this is something that can be easily done if you're inclined to refinish a piece. Um, I can see where these kind of weird burn marks and things have picked up the stain differently. So I'll probably give this another coat. Sometimes if I see that it's picked it up too dark in some spots and not, and not in others, like here, but it's not blotching, then I know I have to go a bit darker just to get a nice coverage. So that's how you do it. So... Um, what I'll do is finish this up probably tomorrow, maybe. Um, and other than the legs, which I have to order from Amazon. But I'll finish it up and then I'll post the pictures on um, Facebook and also on our YouTube. We'll get these videos up for you. So be sure to follow us on Facebook so you don't miss any of these videos. Um, you can... When you go to YouTube, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them as well. And share them with your friends if you have friends that like painting or want to learn how to paint. I've talked to a couple of people this week that are really wanting to learn how to paint. So it's kind of fun. It's relaxing. Sometimes I paint a lot, so sometimes it's not so relaxing. But I generally find it really a peaceful thing to do. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later. So that's it. And um, I'm really hot. I'm like purple in the face. <laughs> but it was fun. It's a, it's going to be a really neat piece.